you mentioned a uh, action against local um, mainstream media. Um, in terms of the uh, superintendent search process, what is CETF's next plan, next step? Their next meeting is uh, scheduled for next Wednesday. The, what's that date? Next Wednesday, the 15th at 5.30 p.m. at Central Office, 131 West Broad Street on the third floor. We'll be there. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't made a decision to take an action. We, our thinking is we're going to go as observers to see you know, whether or not they're going to address the very issues that we're raising here today. And, and beyond that, we haven't planned. But we intend to continue to press for this to be, for the process to have integrity as opposed to um, at least some board members are making a decision before we even know who the other choices are. And so that, that's as far as we plan uh, to this point. Yes. Yes, the board is they're, um, supposed to make, they're going to make their final decision at 16. This is what we're, we were told, that they were making their decisions that the 16th. <coughs> the 16th as far as this closed. The 16th, this is closed. Uh -huh. Of February? Yeah. Of this, of, of February. They're supposed to be. The 16th is, they're making their final decision, the 16th. They're asking the board to close the 16th. Okay, we don't we don't have that information, but thank you. We'll we'll check it out. I don't know how that's possible, but we wouldn't put anything past this board. I, I can't imagine how that's possible, but we 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 will. Thank you for the information. We'll follow up. Yes, Miss Thompson. It might be water under the bridge now, but what would the community education task force's suggestion for selecting a superintendent have been if you did not? Uh, since you did not want to go with the search firm, what would have been your recommendation? Our beginning, as, uh, as uh, Mark read in the statement, beginning in April 2011, when, when Jean-Claude Bazar first announced that he was leaving, our idea was to reach out to the board and say that we could develop a process, a collaborative process with input from everyone in the community who was interested in being involved and that we felt we had that together collectively, we had the knowledge, the expertise, the resources to do an intelligent search that would result in a, in a choosing a person uh, who would be uh, supported by the broadest possible representation of this community. So we didn't have said in our minds, you must do it this way. Our uh, plea to them was let's sit down and talk about this. Let's discuss how we can do something that we've never done in this community before, especially after all of the chaos that had occurred under the Brazard administration. So the idea was we don't want to repeat that, and we want to do a search that will um, give the best chance of producing someone who um, would be in step with what a broad representation of the community thinks is good. So a little bit to that. Um, sure. <clears throat> yeah, uh, one of the most important pieces, uh, there's a lot of important pieces, but one of the most important pieces is this whole issue about family and parent involvement. And it just seems uh, to me, and, and I'm sure to others who have watched this uh, for longer than I have, is that um, they just don't get it. <laughs> and the other night at the, at the uh, meeting to talk about this new proposal for a, a kind of a large high school to, to address some of the concerns, um, you know, the definition of, of talking to parents was so individualized, which, you know, has a role to play to some extent, but seeing parents as being involved as grassroots uh, folks who should be at the very beginning of a process, not at the end, not at the middle, and it's, it's so frustrating because most organizations by now have learned that lesson that you don't put people at the end of a process and then say to them, gee, what do you think? Um, and that seems to be such a basic thing. Um, I, I'm on the task force. I also am active with the Green Party. And one of our charges is that uh, one of our values is grassroots democracy as a key, key value. So that's one of the reasons we got involved with this because we saw the opportunity that could be a, a uh, model of a grassroots uh, approach. But it's 
it's been, we've spent a lot of time, as been said, trying to see that happen. And if you don't have that happen at some basic level, with all this corporate kind of wanting to take over, you're, you're not going to go very far. So sometimes you seem like you're moving forward and then standing still. <laughs> this is a critical point because if we are paying attention, we know that the district makes a lot of um, a lot of claims about wanting parent and community involvement, and then they complain yep. that people won't get involved. And so this this is part of the reason why is because people understand that their involvement is not really valued and so forth, but that often what they what they seem to be looking for is a rubber stamp process. They want people to come so that they can say parents were there, community was there, and so forth, but they don't seem to be open to the idea that we really have something to add to the process. Could, could you elaborate again about uh, what, the, what the board did with the information from the forums and focus groups that went to Ray? After the, the forums and focus groups were concluded in uh, December, um, and this was in accordance with the process that Commissioner Adams had designed and the committee had accepted. They said the next step would be they would bring back all of the information that they collected from those three community forums and the eight, nine focus groups and the committee together would analyze this information and develop some kind of rubric. However, by the time we came to the next meeting, December 19th, I believe it was, they already had the job description. and and. Commissioner Adams and others were saying, well, we, what, what happened to the step that we were supposed to take to analyze this? And if our understanding is correct, not even all of the information was turned over to Ray and Associates, just some of it. And so they had a predetermined idea, at least some board members did, and it seems that some of the search committee members who are not board members were also prepared to go along with that. The, the stage that Howard is talking about, um they refer to it as the synthesis stage, that parent and community and family and all these different focus groups, all the different groups of stakeholders, the information would be analyzed and synthesized, right? And we had concerns about that because we said we really need to focus on having some clarity as to how that's gonna look, what that's gonna look like and how we're gonna do that and honoring public and community and parent input, right? And we didn't, when you see a complete skip of, skip of that stage, that's polar opposite of honoring that when we don't even have dialogue on it and the next meeting is you already have a job description, right? That is where a lot of this concern is coming from, one piece of where a lot of this concern is coming from. I could just quickly add to that. I think one of the, we, we really were against having the search firm as was discussed yes. in this, um, strongly, strongly against, not only economic reasons, which are enough, but what happens with processes a lot of times, if you hire the experts or the somebodies, what happens is there's almost like a natural something pulling where they end up being, we have to kind of fit it into that what they want. Um, even if it's not 100% conscious, I'm sure it is conscious in a lot of ways, but um, so that's one of the reasons you, if you don't have to have those groups and you save money at the same time, and we advocated for that, you would want to stay away from it. It kind of is in competition sometime with grassroots concepts with grassroots so you know uh, I think that's what happened I think you know it, it, it was uh, almost like well we're, we hiring now we're supposed to do have them decide something so let's just move on with it and, and a lot of push on getting things done real mm -hmm. quick if, if you have an opportunity take take a look at Ray and Associates they've had some very uh, mm -hmm. shady dealings in fact they were in charge of selecting a superintendent for one district I can't remember which one right now they 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 recommended this person, the person got the job, and they found out later he, he didn't even have the credentials for the job. And, and mm -hmm. also, it was mentioned that when they put, a, they put a, um, a survey up online for the district, for the, for the Rochester City School District, that parents were supposed to respond to in terms of these questions that were there and so forth. When they came back at their last meeting to you know, announce this job description, uh, <coughs> Some of the people on the search committee asked them, well, what was the, um, what do you call it, when you average something, the base, the, right, what was the base in terms of the number of people who responded to this survey? They couldn't even get they that number. Tell them. They didn't have that number. And so I'm not, I'm not bashing them, but this is, this is fact. Yet they're being touted as they're supposed to be outstanding in, ter in terms of search firms. Um, uh, in the nation, we really should be perhaps asking for our one more thing and then we'll, uh, 
The other thing that's important, I think, that is worthwhile for you guys to check out is when we were talking about, we put on, we put pressure even for, um, in, in this process, for all of the focus groups in the community, uh, for the focus groups to be put up online so that that information could be viewed, right? That, that wasn't gonna be done if we didn't put significant pressure in our view, right? Um, so if you go to rcsdk12.org and look at the superintendent search process link, it's superintendent search, I believe, you can look at the videos and audio of that. We studied what happened in each one of those and we participated in several of them, right? Members of the Community Education Task Force. And if you really study the dynamics and the information and really analyze what's going on within there, um, if you look at them as a whole and then you look at what the direction had, that it's gone in in terms of the uh, job description and the direction that we're going towards right now, community, this is where a lot of our basis is coming from in terms of community, parent, and family input just being a masquerade of taking that seriously. Because the information that where we're going and the direction that we're going right now, there's, there, it's not aligned with that. There's a contradiction between several of the items that you see, such as classroom experience, and that was taken right off the table kind of thing. Like there's things like that where, and that wasn't just us, we did advocate for that, but there was people, parents and community family members that felt strongly that this is an individual who should have classroom experience, should be a veteran educator, you know? So, <coughs> Miss Middleton. Um, and going to the meetings and did some research work, I, 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 I noticed that half of the, um, the so-called, so-called um, people that is, is leading this ordeal, they, their credentials expired. And, and one ed educator, she only has a permit for um, a building principal. But she want to take on a central level. And this is what has failed our kids because we have incompetent educators that, quote, unquote, is not ready. They're not educated themselves. So if the head is not right, the tail is not going to be right. So if you're not educated, the kids is not going to get educated because we don't have edu we don't have qualified educators in our classroom. I'm talking about the credentials was expired, and no questions was answered. And all the meetings that I've gone through, it no question has been answered. And in meeting last night, I spoke with uh, Vargas, and Vargas he was sitting back like, I'm sure this. Um, I'm the next superintendent and ain't nothing nobody no form or nothing can remove me because I have all the people that is backing me and leads me to believe the state in Albany got their back you know and they have the people and, and everybody's in place and we got the board who the, we vote them in you know the community votes the board in and that you know you're outnumbered you know because it's four of us I'm talking about he had this persona that uh, I'm, I, 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 this is what it's going to be. And one of, the, one of the parents said last night, she said, well, I'm confused because you say that you want to propose this one minute. Then you say that, you know, that we're, we're looking at other revenues and avenues or how we can collaborate together, the parents and the, and the community and this. And then you say that this is the way it's going to be at this alternative school and this new school, quote unquote. So the parents was really confused and outraged because he accused me of uh, disrespecting him. You know, I'm talking to him. He was sitting there drinking water from his bottle and wasn't no water in the bottle, wasn't no water in it. While I was talking to him, he had the bottle to his mouth, to his mouth, and, he, and when he, it was his time to take back you know, was talking, he said, yeah, we got to respect each other. So I clearly said to him, respect is due, and you're absolutely right. And if you want respect, you have to give respect. I said, you are acting superintendent, and you just sure yourself as this is what you're going to be. And I said, I'm talking to you, and you had not answered not one question, and you got a bottle to your mouth, to your mouth, as to say to me how I interpret that. What you're saying don't even count, ma'am. I'm already in the seat. Let me, let me add some detail because I think we're at a point where we need to call, call names. So I want to make sure that everybody understands the point that Ms. Middleton just raised. 
she's talking around this so-called um, alternative school that's being developed and based on those of us who have been in the system, who've worked in the system, we know what that really is. It's, it it's looked like it's shaping up to be the new dumping ground, especially the part of it that's going to be located at Jefferson, if you're paying close attention to it. It's going to be, if it goes forward like they, like what we've read in the newspaper, it will be the new dumping ground. Um, but Sandra Jordan is leading that whole effort along with a representative of the union. Sandra Jordan, uh, research shows that Sandra Jordan doesn't have the qualifications to work at the central level. She's got a building level administrative certification. She's not, she's not qualified to work at that level. Sometimes they do that in practice. They will, they will designate people as acting, but that's not in her title. So that also, Mary Doyle, who's chief of staff, who replaced Kim Dice when she got a superintendency in Syracuse recently. Mary Doyle is chief of staff and she's over chief. innovation and she's just chief of staff. But right. the point, we're talk, look, we're talking six figure salaries. Yes. Somebody who doesn't have a certification at all, who had a provisional internship that expired, six figures. And so what, is, what does this have to do with Vargas? Both of those are his appointments. So that gives you some idea of how he might operate. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's important. That's yes. very important. Ted? I'm just curious. Oh, go ahead. What is Vargas' qualification as being the superintendent? Well, he has a PhD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His uh, dis dissertation was uh, done on, uh, I think, preventing dropouts. And he used the Rochester City School District as a model. Uh, the guy has zero teaching experience. He's been a counselor for uh, about 30 years, a little less than 30 years. He's been a school counselor, which we respect, but that doesn't uh, necessarily um, give you the insight to really understand uh, what happens in the, in the organization, particularly as it relates to the relationships between students and families and so forth. You got a different kind of view as a counselor and he absolutely has no experience with running an organization this large a 700 million dollar enterprise and he did serve on the board he did serve on the throughout board throughout the 1990s he, and i had questions about his service then too i'm just curious how can you be a superintendent and you never taught in a school i mean you never did anything as well i mean counselor is a lot, but you're in charge of educators, and you never educated. I don't understand that. Good How question. can he be appointed? And you have, you're not listening to the parents. You're not listening to the community. You know, so who's who's making these decisions? You know, I mean, they're really. I've been to several meetings where you guys fight for, you know, parent input, parent involvement, parent voices to be heard, and the school board. I've been to several meetings where they don't even address questions asked. They don't address parents. They, 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 it's like a courtroom. You know, it's only one judge and he make that decision is final. And, and I don't think that that's, that's fair. I mean, aren't they su supposed to be for the community? This, this is an excellent point. Listen, connected to, and we're certain about it, Connected to the fact that the mainstream media is not here today, if you paid attention, there's been this coordinated um, um, campaign, uh, publicity campaign, to really um, tout the fact that, or the idea that Vargas has restored order after Brazard. He's begun to build relationships Many. again. He's on the right track to improving things and so forth. But if you listen to his state of the school's speech, he made it clear he's on the same track that Bazaar was on. He's not doing anything fundamental. fundamentally different. This idea about the alternative school is a big deal. You got the union and um, the administration and only a few people planning this huge design for how we're gonna deal with 1,700 students. Mm -hmm. Some of the most, uh, students with some of the most uh, uh, challenging issues in this system and no involvement of parents at all, none. 
that speaks to what you're raising. They say that they value, and they as the board, the superintendent, the administration in general, we value parent and community involvement. One of the reasons we can't make improvement is because not enough people are involved. We need everybody to be involved. You hear this rhetoric all the time, but if you watch the practice, often it's the, some, I think Mark said, diametrically opposed to what they're saying. <laughs> I've been coming to the meetings and my name is Saheem Murray and I kind of sit back and it just seems like the reason for me that they're pushing Vargas is because with him being on the board, it's like the union, he's a puppet for the union and that's just the agenda um, with me being a community based uh, person, it seems like they always say we want the parent and the community involved but when we come to get involved, our point don't even really matter. So my, I missed the first part of this, but so I'm looking for whoever we choose to put in here to make sure that we have somebody that we can put in that's going to have our community at interest, our churches, because churches have been taken out of, not to say that they have a big dynamic, but our kids flow through the churches. So I'm thinking that when we come to vote somebody into this thing, we got somebody who, who has this $700 million budget for the city who, who embrace our kids as a whole instead of having these dictators who they can use as puppets to do what their plan and their agenda is. Somebody who's who's pushing to do what we need to have done. Not just my... All of you, the, the next meeting of this search committee is next Wednesday, the 16th, 15th? Please, I hope that we will be there and that we will encourage others to come and so that we can have firsthand knowledge of what's happening next because we intend to plan ongoing action. This can't be, this is not an event. This is a process if we're really gonna make change. Um, we were absolutely surprised, if not shocked, to see a statement from Dr. Adam Urbanski last week that he believes that the majority of the teachers in the school district would be pleased to see Dr. Vargas as the next superintendent. Now let me tell you why that's so surprising. Because we don't even know what the other possible choices are. Right? We don't even know. Right? We might have the superman that everybody or superwoman that everybody's been waiting for. I'm I'm joking about that, but that's kind of ludicrous. We don't know what who the other choices are, but we're you know, we would be pleased with Dr. Vargas. Uh, so that was surprising to us. Yeah, that's why I and, said that. And Vargas is their buddies, you know. He gets to manipulate how that money is being generated throughout our community for our children. And another point to raise is, yes, there's that. We have a relationship, again, with the union as far as, like, work that we've done. We may take, it seems we're taking a different position right now. We are. Right. Um, but as far as there's this intersection of a lot of forces, like the union has expressed support. Um, some teachers have expressed support. You know, I don't have the, the, the statistic, the figure on that. We can't really quantify that right now. But also it's important to recognize that the local media, the kind of corporate business elites, lots of organizations, you know, there, there's an intersection of these very powerful forces that are really propping them up and really it's set to, you know, in, in this process, really set to make sure that this is confirmed, it's a done deal kind of situation, which is concerning because we really want, when we say restoring fairness and integrity to this process, if it ends up being Bohean Vargas, if this process is really trying to find the highest quality person, if it's a process that's sound and that really involves a large amount of people, it should naturally be whoever is the most qualified. But being that we don't have that process, it's hard for us to make any kind of statement as such that we saw last week. And it, I, w I feel like we would be wrong if we made a statement like that. So as far as saying that we already know who it's going to be without knowing who the choices are and with the way this process has gone forward, it's hard to be confident. And make mm -hmm. Well, hopefully we're going to find out uh, some answers to that question uh, next Wednesday, we hope. We hope that some answers will come forth. We saw two or three other hands. Is there anybody who hasn't had a chance? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I want to say that uh, back from the time when I served on the board from uh, 2000 through 2007, eight years, mm -hmm. we definitely did have um, 
we definitely were giving mixed messages as a board and as a district when it came to parent involvement because on one hand we were saying yes we need more parent involvement we don't have it and we were beckoning parents to be involved with one hand and pushing them away with the other and and it's been four years since I served on the board but I don't have any reason to believe that that's changed drastically one of the problems even when we do receive when we did receive parent involvement or input was that in my opinion there wasn't a solid process in place and this is something that was on my platform when I ran for the board we needed to really tighten up our processes how do we engage how do we utilize the information and back then and I don't know that it's changed too much now there isn't a good solid process for board members to receive information to talk amongst themselves and hash things out before coming to decisions often which wind up being rushed and, um, and not as uh, deliberative as they needed to be. And so I think that an absence of the infrastructure to do good work on behalf of the community uh, is part of the problem. And then finally, um, I, don't, I don't believe the Community Education Task Force was saying that it was against a national search. I believe you were saying that there are certain attributes that a local person could perhaps bring, but you were more so not for having this highly paid national search organization brought, be brought in, and you felt that our community could conduct the search, including local and national candidates, possibly. Okay, then my last thing I wanted to say was, one of the concerns I have with a local person, and it's not absolutely with every single local, local person that might be considered for superintendent, but one of my concerns is that a local person too often has ties and owes too many favors to people. And I'm concerned that the decisions that that local person makes will, um, will mean that they have to keep out certain people uh, because of the ties that local person has with their supporters. They either have to keep out certain people who could be very instrumental in helping our children or they're going to be obligated to include certain people in their cabinet or what have you because of the support they have from others. So a local person or any person, but especially a local person in my opinion, would have to have the intestinal fortitude to really be able to stand and willing to stand on their own two feet and do what's best for the children and not repaying favors uh, from others that may have supported his or her rise. Absolutely. The first part of that statement, you articulated our position almost perfectly. Uh, <clears throat> indeed, we, we, we weighed both things. We said there's some possible advantages to a local person in terms of knowing the dynamics you know, and, and the, the interworkings and so forth, but we also acknowledged this possibility of politics getting in the way. So that wasn't supposed to be a sole criteria. That was one thing in a whole list of things that were developed. We, even at one of the search committee meetings, by the way, we didn't put that in our statement. We shut one of their meetings down because they wouldn't acknowledge people. And on the spot, people who came to that particular meeting developed what we call a people's criteria. We sent that to them, sent it to the search committee. We don't believe that information was even considered in this process. It doesn't look like it. It's not reflected in the job description and, and so forth. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of us having the collective knowledge and understanding and expertise, just, it was important. We had people from U of R, from the School of Education at U of R, who were willing to help with this process. And as far as I know, they weren't even asking to be compensated. Mm -hmm. The board didn't pay any attention to that. Ms. Middleton? Uh, uh, one of the parents asked to be on the planning committee of this alternative school in this new school. They sent her a letter of denial and said she was denied. A parent. <laughs> a parent. They told, you know, that she was, she could not be on the planning committee, um, the original planning committee. And another thing, we met with, the, the board met with, um, um, with the committee that's, you know, that's, that's uh, head spearing this um, alternative school in this new school, quote unquote. And um, the parents started mumbling. And we wanted to mumble because we wanted to be heard. 
and I said, we're not going to close this meeting because we, and I, I burst out and said this. We're not going to close this meeting because we have not been heard. We're the parents. You guys are teaching our kids and have not taught them anything but how to fight each other. Okay? Because you're disengaging, you know, the children from their work because you guys are in the hallway doing what you guys have to do because I'm in the building. And, and, and let me bag back. I'm the president of the PTO of Freddie Thomas High School. I'm in the building at least four times a week. So we had to, when I said we was, we, we was talking loud and, and we was disruptive. And I said, I told everybody, it's okay. Come on, cause we're gonna be heard tonight. And I had to spurt this out. And I said, we wanna talk. What's wrong with, these are our children. These are our children that's been exploited. These are our children, our kids. And I said, but you don't want us to say anything as to what's going on. You want us to be quiet. You do as I do. This is what going to be done. So you got no voice in this. You just sit down and be quiet. That shouldn't be. You see what I'm saying? And so Van White said, okay, okay. We left. The, the meeting started at, at the meeting started at 530. We did not get out of, at 6. We did not get out of that to 9. It was almost 9 o'clock because the parents wanted to be heard one by one. And I'm like, what is really going on? And they were, they had some, and, and what they were saying was correct. Why you are we be always overlooked? And you want the state level, and you want uh, Washington DC to believe that we're incompetent. We don't this, we don't want to do this, and we don't want to do that. And that's not the case here. You guys have did us like this too long. We have competent parents that is willing. We have PTO presidents and we have active parent group, but you guys don't want this. Now this was Monday. This was Monday when the um, administration came before the board committee, the Excellence and Student Achievement Committee, one of the, is it eight standing committees that the board has? The administration came before the board committee, standing committee, to explain uh, details around the development of this alternative uh, school. And you had Sandra Jordan, Bohem Vargas, and who was the third person? It was the third person. Somebody from the administration. Somebody else from the administration. Explaining, you know, this, this, this concept that parents haven't been involved in, and, this, and anybody who knows education knows that the concept is fundamentally flawed. And, and parents are sitting there, and so <laughs> there's no opportunity for parents to have any, and we're talking about parents who are directly impacted by this. Their children are in the schools where these, where this shuffling and moving people and so forth is going to take place. But I mean, it's just an example of what you mentioned earlier, the contradiction of pushing and so-called inviting at the same time. And it seems as if it doesn't even occur to them that they should ask parents what they think. It's, it's Many amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think yeah, they asked jumping. me to sit down. They brought the security guard. I'm the parent now. They went and got the security guard. Mary Doyle mm -hmm. told the security guard to have her to sit down. I said, excuse me. He said, ma'am, I'm sorry. You're going to have to sit. I said, sir, you, I think you invade my space. You asking me to sit where? Where would you like for me to sit? Down or not? I said, because you know what? All those people are standing over there. Why didn't you go to them? Why do I got to sit down? So Mary Doyle comes to me. Oh, this okay. I said, you know you out of pocket. They tell me to sit down. I pay city taxes. I pay state taxes. And I pay school taxes. But you want me to sit down because I am, the questions that I'm asking you guys, you don't want to answer them. So to keep me quiet, you're going to, you know, you're going to exhort your authority. You At least you thought you was going to sit me down. I said, sir, if you do not get out my face, please get out my face. And they saw me when I was saying, get out my face now. He went right on, Mary Doyle. She came to me. It's cold. It's okay. Everybody else standing up. Me too. But I was giving her to talk. But she wanted to sit me down. Can I make a little comment? Yes. Yeah. Um, some of these things that you talk about, I, I often think uh, uh, that they relate to some basic concepts and basic characteristics and we were talking uh, during this time period about the characteristics of a superintendent 
And one of the characteristics uh, of a lot of people in these positions is kind of keeping the status quo, keeping things the way they are. And, mm -hmm. and you know, they'll deny that, but that's basically what you see. So what happens when they come across parents who are uh, activists? Who speak up. They don't know how to handle it, and, and I think they're personally threatened, which is silly, but that's the way I think they look at it. And it also reminds me, when we were talking about the characteristics of the uh, superintendent, one of the things we discussed in one of the groups was, you know, let's look at somebody, in addition, who knows budgets and all that good stuff, let's look at somebody who's had a past that has actually done some activist work. And, 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 and can and can uh, take questions related to that and even go to the groups that they were involved with and say, you know, how did this person do? Not that we're expecting the superintendent to go, you know, pick it every other day or something, but you have to understand where people are coming from and what that activism is in order for you to relate to the pe very people you're mm -hmm. talking to. And so I think that's a pretty important characteristic, not the only one, you know, but it's an important one. And I found over the years of doing this kind of work, it makes a big difference where the person themselves have, are, are coming from. And these characteristics often get overlooked. They, they seem, well, why in the world would you want an activist person who has a history? That's nothing to do with a budget. Excuse me? So, yeah. I had that let, me, let me repeat a couple of dates because I want us to, these to be etched in our, in our brains. Next Wednesday is the 15th. That's the next meeting of the superintendent search committee. We plan to be there and we hope that you'll come and urge others to come because this has to be ongoing if we're going to impact the process. Next Thursday is the board's regular monthly business meeting. We can sign up to speak at that meeting, 2628525. You have to call at least by noon the day of the meeting. That's next Thursday. And so we plan to sign up and speak to these issues at that meeting. And we are definitely going to plan an action to deal with the mainstream media. They're, they're not going to continue to act irresponsible in terms of uh, covering news. We're not, we don't have to beg them to come to our events. This is news. And they have an obligation to be here unless something really important happened in the community this morning and they all couldn't be here. And it's doubtful that that, that did happen. So we plan an action, and it won't be uh, just talking to people, it will be an action. And we will let you know, and hopefully you'll join us with that. Nothing crazy and wild and so forth, mm -hmm. but we intend to get their attention so that the next time we do this, uh, they'll all be here. Yes, Ted? I had originally, I was gonna ask you what your thoughts and analysis of uh, Vargas were, but I've been getting a lot of that throughout the press conference, it's been great. But my, uh, my next question is more about allies that CETF has or had in the past. And with this sort of um, groundswell by, I guess, what you might call elites or, or upper echelon people within the school system around Vargas, how does that impact the work you're doing and how does that impact the connections and the, the alliances that you have with people that we're, you work with? We're, we're very, and, and by the way, several organizations were uh, represented here this morning, CJE, uh, the parents, parents United, uh, 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 Green Party. So there were several organizations um, represented here this morning. Uh, we, those of us in this room, represent a lot more people than who were actually here mm -hmm. physically. We're very encouraged by the fact. I, th I think I'm, I, I think it's fair to say fact that parents are really starting to get it that we cannot be divided, even if we're not like-minded on every issue. We must unite on those issues that we are like-minded, and we, we don't need to criticize one another when we're not like-minded. And so parents are starting to get that. We're having conversations all over the community about mm -hmm. that. We're even encouraged by the new president of one of the, the district's inside organization, the, the district-wide parent council, mm -hmm. who's saying that she wants to work with various groups and wants to bring about a process uh, that helps to involve more parents in terms of the resources that are, that are uh, available to them and so forth. So we're very encouraged. We, uh, this broad-based coalition is two years old. The, ta the Community Education Task Force is connected to a broad-based coalition is two years old and, and continuing and, and we believe getting stronger and, and the alliances are expanding. We're certain about it and we're looking forward to it. So. We don't feel discouraged at all. 
Yes. You know what stood out last night with one of the parents, I, I was so impressed, and I think you can, one of the parents asked Sandy Jordan, she said, why have you failed our children and they gonna head, you gonna head spear another project to fail those kids and push them on out in the streets? And she couldn't answer that and didn't answer it. Why did you fail our children and now our school closing because of you and you, you were the principal and you let all this go on and now our kids is, you wanna send, you wanna head spear another, another organization and fell our kids again. We're not standing for it this time. The parents was real outraged. I was I was impressed with the outcome. I was truly impressed. And not any of my question got answered because I asked for credentials. Everybody had got really quiet when I said, we need to see credentials. We need to see, are you qualified? It is too much going on for our kids to be like they are and you're a qualified professional. I said, do you guys challenge energy because it seems as though to me you know you're not challenging any energy and this is why our kids are like they are but, I mean, man, I, I, this is not to pick on any individual no, but, but we do we need to understand how serious this is yes. the sandy jordan i mean because i think we're at a point where we need to call names right. if my understanding is correct she's the vice president of asar the union that she belongs to. Somebody asked her, what does ASAR, what do the initials stand for? She couldn't, she couldn't say. Yeah. Other, others in the boardroom couldn't so say. So the yeah. point is the incompetence is deep. It's really, really deep. It's deep, it really is. So we won't uh, hold you all any longer. We thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. the, we're continuing to build a movement. Together we're gonna make some change in this. We must for our children. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. you. Yeah.